Hey guys, um, today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. Um, we're going to be talking about betting size. So what this means for us is let's say uh, we want to make an option trade. Let's say we want to trade a bull call spread. We want to know what fraction of our wealth should we put in that trade? What fraction of our portfolio? Um, and there's obviously infinite ways to answer this. Um, but one such, uh, maybe the most famous way to answer this is so-called Kelly criteria, which gives you the optimal bet size um, to maximize long-term expected growth. I'm going to be talking about the Kelly criteria. I'm going to show you guys a few examples with it. Um, we're going to focus on the very, very most basic case where you can take a bet and you can win a dollar or lose a dollar, but you can bet any fraction of your wealth. So let's say I have $1,000. I can bet up to 1000 so I can bet $500. And if I win, I win another 500 If I lose, I lose 500 but since I had a thousand, I'm left with five hundred. But let, let's say I bet all my money, I bet a thousand dollars, and I lose. I'm, I have zero. So, but the, so obviously, betting all your money, unless you know for sure you're going to win, is a bad idea. But is there a some sort of optimal amount to bet? So this is what we're trying to answer, and we're going to again focus on the simple case of you win one or you lose one. Um, okay, so um, let's first derive. Uh, um, how, how to get this optimal wealth thing. So um, assume we have some sort of um, W or a current wealth, and we have to choose what fraction of it, F, we want to bet. And this F, uh, this F, which becomes FW, um, can either double or become zero. And let's assume we know this probability P of winning, and 1 minus P, of course, is the probability of losing, right? So mathematically, we can model this as um, we have a random variable x in 1 minus 1, uh, denoting if we win or lose a bet. Okay, so like our initial wealth is w, and then um, times k, um, f is the fraction we're betting, and then 1 plus x. Um, and then plus 1 minus f is the fraction we're not betting. So two cases can happen. A, we can win the bet. So then this 1 plus x becomes uh, a 2, and you get 2f, meaning the portion we bet doubled. And then the 1 minus f here stays the same. So then we're left with w times f plus 1. Case 2 is if we lose the bet. So this f times 1 plus x thing now becomes um, f times 0. We lost this whole thing. So we're left with just uh, what we did not bet, which is 1 times 1 minus f. Okay. So the Kelly criteria itself um, it finds this optimal F, F by seeking to maximize the expected growth rate of our investment. So let's say uh, our growth rate of our investment can be defined as follows. We have this initial wealth W and take an exponent to the power R, which is the growth rate. And that equals, uh, after we make the bet, the random uh, quantity here. and um, when we take the logarithm of this uh, and solve for r, we get uh, ln f times 1 plus x plus 1 minus f. So then if you take the expectation, you see that the expected growth rate becomes expectation uh, with respect of r becomes expectation of uh, this quantity. Um, and if you, if you remember that, like um, uh, with you have probability p of um, x being 1 or winning the bet, and probability 1 minus p of x being uh, negative 1 losing the bet, you see you'll have the two cases. So let's let's just for a second do case 1. Okay, so case 1 is um, with probability p, um, you win the bet, and what happens? This uh, 1 becomes a 2f, and then you have a minus f here, so it becomes an f, f plus 1. That's why you get f plus 1. That's uh, with probability p when you win the bet. Um, when you lose the bet, this whole thing becomes zero, and you're just left with one minus f. So that's where the ln one minus f comes in. And okay, from our beginning calculus, this uh, is maximized uh, with respect to the uh, wealth fraction f by setting the derivative equal to zero. So we have to set the derivative of this guy with respect to f equal to zero. So we take the derivative with respect to f, set it equal to zero. And you get f equals 2p minus 1, which is the optimal amount of wealth uh, you should bet to maximize the expected growth rate. One quick thing to note is if p is 
it means 0.5 times 2 is 1 minus 1 is 0. It means you shouldn't bet anything if you don't have an edge. And of course, if p is less than 0.5, uh, you, it becomes a negative number, so you don't bet anything. So this only works when you have some sort of an edge or a probability greater than a half. So for example, if p is 0.75, you bet uh, 0.75 times 2 is 1.5 minus 1 is 50% of your wealth. If p is 0.99, you bet 1.98 minus 1 is 0.98% of your wealth. So you don't bet 100% of your wealth because like one bad luck and you lose it all. Happens a lot of times. For example, to, to, to me, so like uh, this isn't important. Even if you don't use the strategy exactly, some of its ideas are very, very important to, to use. Um, but note, in practice, estimating this P is just impossible. So, um, uh, or very hard at least. So maybe you should use like a more conservative thing, smaller number than 2P minus 1. You can use maybe half Kelly, which is divide this fraction by a half, and you get like... Um, uh, a P minus a half, that's an idea. Okay, um, so let me just show you guys a few experiments, like some random things of like uh, doing this experiment with um, basically uh, um, a thousand trades and starting with a thousand dollars, some uh, various P's, comparing the Kelly, half Kelly, and things like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, let me just just real quick show you guys uh, something before that is like, um, yeah. <laughs> so it's funny, like um, if you haven't taken derivatives in a long time, you're not alone. But there's a Python package that lets you do that, okay? So there's a Python package called Simpy, which I guess stands for Symbolic uh, Python. So um, we can actually do these taking derivatives, and if you forgot how to do it, um, uh, then you can do it with this package. So like, okay, so what you do is you define the symbols. We have an F and we have a P, F and P. Um, and also now we define the value, the, the, the expression we want to take the derivative of. So in our case, it's ER, expectation of R. So we do E underscore R equals P times LN F plus one. Uh, L, L, sorry, LN uh, F plus one plus one minus P times LN one minus F. And now to take the derivative with respect to f, we you use this diff function from this library. And you do diff er f, you get d e r f like that. And um, OK, and uh, we can solve the derivative for, uh, uh, for f with respect to setting it to 0, sorry. And uh, you use this by the solve function. So you have the derivative we just calculated. Uh, and then uh, uh, you solve uh, um, when you do like this with f. Uh, it, it solves it for zero, um, and you get um, the first solution. It's a list of solutions, but there's only one solution, so I took the first one. So anyways, this is a way to solve it set to zero. This is a way to take the derivative. So if you forgot derivatives like me, it's probably a good idea to use this package. I think it's pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah, um, it's like a cheat sheet. Um, OK, so now let's show you the experiments. So let's uh, first let's define like a random variable that will correspond to like our game, right? So remember in our game, you, you, you bet a certain amount and you either double that amount you bet or it goes to zero, right? So this random variable will take uh, with that probability p, it becomes two, and with probability one minus p it becomes one. And we do this np.numpy.randomchoice library where you give it like the choices and the probabilities. And so an example, we have p equals 0.7 here, and we print the result. Usually it'll be two, but after a few times, it'll be zero. I guess uh, maybe there's a seed issue here. Oh, zero. Huh. It's funny. Um, I expected a zero to come a lot earlier, but it didn't. OK, so let's define parameters. OK, so let's define the initial capital. And let's define um, uh, the probability p and the number of trades 1,000. So I, I want to compare. Um, like I said above, I want to compare the Kelly and the half Kelly strategies. And maybe we should also maybe compare, um, I mean, you can compare betting all your money because uh, eventually, eventually, like, I mean, I'm not going to, you know what, I'm not going to show it, but you can add to this comparing all your money, meaning you bet 100% each time. And you'll see that after a few times, you get bad luck, it goes to zero, and you're done. You can never play again. 
So uh, let's simulate, and that's unfortunately what happens to people who are over leveraged in real life. So let's say uh, in real life, let's say I do an option strategy. There's a 95% chance I'm going to win. And, I, and one in a million thing happens and the stock crashes completely and you bet all your money, your whole, all your options, all your calls, all your uh, bull call spreads all go to zero. Even though before that there was like a 0% chance that happened. But like the one in a million event made it happen and your whole portfolio is wiped out. So um, never bet all your money. Don't make the mistakes I make, made. Um, so let's simulate the Kelly and half Kelly. So what I do here is I have like a portfolio value and a portfolio value half Kelly, which is basically going to be like an array um, of size of num trades uh, The fir uh, plus one. And the first value is the initial capital for each, which is a thousand. And then I'm going to increment, I'm going to simulate this um, where like each time it uh, either uh, the, the fraction you bet, um, uh, you uh, okay, so the um, so the fraction you bet, the two times P minus one in, that, in the Kelly case, uh, either doubles or becomes zero. Uh, um, and in the half Kelly case, it also either doubles or becomes zero, but now you're only betting P minus a half. And, um, and otherwise, in both cases, the rest of the value, you just keep in cash. So in the first case, it's one minus this thing, you keep in cash. So if you do one minus this thing, you, you're going to end up with two uh, times one minus P. And then if you do one minus this thing, you're going to get um, one minus minus a half is three halves minus P is this. So anyways. So let's just look at it. We're doing P equals 0.55, so that's a really good thing. If you have a strategy with P equals 0.55 and you can make a lot of trades, you will be a millionaire very fast. So let's look at it and let's compare. So um, this is just obviously one run. If you run many runs, you're going to get a different thing. But like, look at the, it's funny, like the full Kelly went off to a bad start here the ha and the half Kelly because it's a little bit more um, robust. Uh, um, did better. Uh, let's see if the full Kelly, the regular Kelly, catches up um, after a thousand trades. But like uh, you'll see that the half Kelly, the drawdowns are not as extreme because it's just you're betting less money. Here, the half Kelly uh, seems to have won the strategy. And you know what? Let's just do it again. Let's start it again. Let's just do um, for this. So first one we saw half Kelly won, right? And now let's see, Full Kelly can win. It's a thousand trades. If we run it a lot longer, I am guessing that Full Kelly will win. Um, so let's. Uh... But you know what? In real life, uh, you might have gotten a margin call or something in, in the meantime. So, so here, look, the second uh, t uh, simulation we're running is Full Kelly uh, seems to win. Uh, speaking too soon, but look at these extreme drawdowns. But and Half Kelly is just a way nicer curve. But like, yeah, full Kelly still ended up winning. <laughs> okay, so okay, whatever. This is just a thousand. Uh, let's just if we were to make it ten thousand trades, you'll see just how unfair P equals 0.55 is. And if you have an algorithm that this that's this good, you're just gonna be a millionaire really fast. But let's do P equals 0 0.5 uh, 0 0.55 still. But now let's do ten thousand trades. And of course, if you really want to analyze this, maybe you'll you'll run it many times, take an average, that sort of thing. But this is just uh, this is just an intuition thing, like. I think also in later videos, if, if you guys enjoy these types of videos, we can also talk about um, uh, doing it when you have like a four to one uh, uh, risk reward with a certain probability and things like that. Similar to like when you're trading uh, spreads with options. Um, also, I wanted to say that, of course, my plugin, if you're new, uh, please subscribe, like. It makes me smile a lot um, and I would really appreciate it. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, really appreciate it if you guys do that. And if you guys enjoy these types of videos of like the Kelly criteria, we can do more advanced ones. Um, anyways, just another quick thing is look how nice and smooth the um, half Kelly is compared to the Kelly. The Kelly's like goes nuts a lot of times, you know, uh, which is funny actually. Look how nuts this is. This is a good... See, that's also a reason why you can't. Um, it, you can, in real life, if you have 55% probability of, of um, winning on like, and you can have the ability to make many such bets, it's just not possible. You can't make this money this fast. 
So like if you see an ML paper with like a algo trading strategy with 0.55% success of, of, of winning, they probably are doing something that's not right. But here, obviously, you'll see it looks like the full Kelly is just killing the half Kelly. You don't even see the half Kelly. Okay, so let's uh, do something a little bit more interesting maybe is like um, if you do like 0.51 maybe. Let's say 0.505. Let's say we have just a, a tiny edge. And let's see how good this could be a tiny edge. This is where like a different run can give you something completely different. But like, okay, if you have 0.505, let's see how this will go the Kelly versus half Kelly. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I, uh, if you guys enjoy these types of videos, just make a comment, ask questions. I'm, I'm open to making many more of these types of videos. Um, this is, does not count in, in the weekly machine learning video, um, but um, yeah, but uh, it, yeah. So here it's with a much smaller probability. It's instead of 0.55, it's 0.505. Um, and by the way, uh, while this is running, like I use this uh, funk animation thing where you kind of um, give it a frames. These are the x-axis, and at a high level, and then you can update the frames. You can like. Um, append, uh, you, you add the frame, uh, you do set data for the new data and the new data you get by the frame number and the portfolio value at the frame number or from the frame number and the portfolio value of the half Kelly at the frame number. Uh, but anyways, this is in matplotlib's documentation. So uh, you should check that out. I don't want to explain it because I don't know, I don't know it so well. Anyways, but as you see, look at the half Kelly is nice and smooth. The full Kelly could be a little bit bipolar sometimes. Um, and look, it uh, just depends on your risk tolerance. Maybe in practice this is better because you can't really measure P and you don't want to screw up completely. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I just think this is interesting. Um, I just want to also mention that um, uh, that uh, where did I get this um, idea of this uh, thing from? I From this book gave me some idea of this uh, – of making this topic so yeah but uh, I don't want to waste your guys' time waiting for this to converge um, but um, as you see like the hat the full Kelly like it's very uh, <laughs> it's very uh, crazy you know so like maybe you prefer this strategy it's a little bit more smooth even though the full Kelly is still winning um, you could very easily with a different run get it in the opposite way maybe we can just see if we can get it the opposite way out of sheer luck so let's try the opposite way. Maybe you can sometimes get like that the full Kelly got, like, screws up and then doesn't isn't able to uh, get back very fast. Um, oh, and a few a few nice things about the Kelly criteria is like you can never go to zero, which is nice. Uh, but like you can go very low. So here this is a case I guess where it's like it kind of screwed up and it's kind of stuck and it's trying to get out of this mess. While the full half Kelly is a little bit better. Like getting out of this mess. Uh, anyways, uh, yeah, and I've seen cases where this gets stuck for a while. When you have a very slightly above 50% uh, chance, it can it take a long time for it to climb back up. Um, but um, the half Kelly is just a lot easier, smoother. So it really depends. It also shows you the variance it runs. I just ran it again, and now we see a completely different curve. But like. Yeah, so like it depends on your risk tolerance. Maybe if your risk tolerance is smaller, you should use the half Kelly criteria. Or another thing is you can um, down estimate. You can like set a lower bound on your probability estimate. Anyways, I'm rambling on. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And thank you.